Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu Humans deck. At least it's a mostly Humans deck. We do have an exception here in Knight of the Ebon Legion. It's more of a Knight deck than a Humans deck, but we are building around General Kudro of Draneth, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary Human Soldier from Ikoria, giving other humans we control plus 1 plus 1, and whenever General Kudro or another human enters a battlefield under our control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard, and for 2-mana we can sacrifice 2 humans to destroy target creature with a power 4 or greater, so it gives us a bit of a built-in removal against the giant monsters as well. Now the reason we ended up in this knight's deck instead of a more traditional human's deck with Hero of Precinct 1 is because a worthy knight still generates 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens whenever we play a knight spell and a lot of the one drops that you want to be playing in a human's deck are knights anyway. We've got the venerable knight as a 1 mana 2-1 that when it dies leaves behind a plus one plus one counter. We've got Knight of the Ebon Legion, this one not a human, but just a very good one drop in general, so happy to play it alongside our worthy knight. And then Fervent Champion, which we all know out of the mono red decks, one mana for a 1-1 one, one first strike haste, that gives another attacking knight plus one plus so until end of turn. So a lot of powerful one drops that are all knights, so they all synergize very nicely with the worthy knight, not as much with the Hero of Precinct 1, which only cares about multicolor spells, do still have a couple multicolor spells in the deck. I did try a build with both the Worthy Knight and the Hero of Precinct 1, but I wasn't too impressed by it. So I ended up with a more traditional Mardu Knight deck. And then besides the Worthy Knight at 2 mana, we've got the Black Lance Paragon. Pairs nicely with the first strike on Fervent Champion and the double strike on Embercleave. Can also gain a bit of life and helps us play around Sweeper effects. We've got the Stormfist Crusader for some extra card draw. And then Inspiring Veteran as another Anthem effect, giving other knights we control plus one plus one. So alongside our general, these two will pump up the team. And then we also have the full playset of Dire Tactics as another new addition from Ikoria, exiling target creature. And if we don't control a human, we lose life equal to that creature's toughness, but we usually will have a human in play. So nice two mana removal spell, add instant speed. And then of course we've got our general, and then last but not least, Embercleave as the way for this deck to close out the game. The fact that we're playing Embercleave means we don't get any companion, otherwise we would get to play Gigantha as kind of a free roll 5 drop, but I think Embercleave is still worth it. And then going over the mana base, of course another great reason to go into the Knight archetype is that we get to play with Tournament Grounds, which fixes all our issues that these aggressive multicolor decks tend to have with a lot of tap lands. Then we've got for Sacred Foundry, for Blood Crypt, and for Godless Shrine, so all 12 shock lands, and then two of each basic. No real room for castles, since those don't really synergize all that well with the tournament grounds, and we're already paying a lot of life to these lands, so we want to make sure we have a couple lands that come into play untapped without any issues. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, acceptable opening hands, got all three of our colors. One drop into two drop. Definitely gonna lead with our worthy knight if we can. And then probably keep the knight of Ebon Legion back. If they do have a stomp or a shock to take out worthy knight, I don't want to be taking two. If we're only dealing one against the red decks. We usually want to just uh, assemble a giant board with a couple... Uh, Anthem effects before we are interested in racing. Stomp takes care of the Worthy Knights. Don't get to double one drop, so still gonna play another Knight here. And hopefully this Worthy Knight survives. The basic planes is a little awkward here since it doesn't let us cast our Crusader. Secure the Critics, takes out Worthy Knights. Alright, now I get to double spell. But I don't get to play Crusader plus something else. Not gonna Dire Tactics the Spitter. Could attack first two. I'm probably gonna end up playing Fervent Champion plus Knight of Ebon Legion here anyway. So in that case I might as well... Uh, Played first. And 
Not enough to put a counter on both knights, sadly, but uh, maybe next turn. Opponent plays Annex. Good thing their tactics exiles, so we don't uh, need to worry about those Seder tokens. Attack with all. Get to grow the Knights of the Ebon Legion. Alright, this would be a good time to find our General or uh, Inspiring Veteran. Three mana Light of the Stage, so put on holding some expensive cards. Tin Street Dodger. And there's an Ember Cleave, which should seal the deal. And then I guess I can even pump a Knight. And still Cleave. So, probably gonna go all in on this Knight of Evan Legion. To get in the most damage. Sure. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Decent hands. Especially if they can't remove my veterans. And which land to lead with? I guess Sacred Foundry, that way both Mountain and Plains can be played for the veteran. Alright, there's a Plains. Opponent on Jeskai. Fire Prophecy takes out Veteran. Alright, that's gonna slow us down quite a bit. Delays the Ember Cleave too. I think I like playing Stormfist before playing a Veteran. Playing Veteran is much better if we already have a bit of a board presence going. A Legion Warboss, alright, so... Definitely looks like a Winota combo deck. Just gonna keep curving out. The Stormfist Crusader is drawing the opponent extra cards, so makes it more likely for them to have Wino Town 4. Just gotta hope they don't hit Agent of Treachery, otherwise we probably lose. Alright, there's Winota. Gets to spin the wheel twice. First one's a miss. And the second one must not have been good enough, and her point explodes, so... Yeah, sometimes the Winota deck goes off, hits double agent, and you lose on the spot. Sometimes it kind of fizzles out. So definitely a deck with a bit of variance. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Kiruga deck, which probably implies Jeskai Fires of Invention, which if they have Clarion is going to be pretty tough. We're also missing a 1-drop here, so we're not going to have a very explosive start. This might be a mulligan since we don't even have the white mana to cast tactics in general. Alright, this is a little bit better. So I want to keep the 1-drop, I want to probably keep general. So between Dire Tactics, Paragon, and a third land, I guess 
probably get rid of a third lens. Sphinx confirms our suspicion that this is uh, just guy fires. Dire tactics still pretty reasonable in the matchup. Plenty of big creatures we can take out. Cards we don't want to see, Bone Crusher Giants, Deafening Clarion. The fairy can be annoying, but it's still manageable. So keeping up Blacklands Paragon would play around Deafening Clarion the best, but of course getting the Worthy Knight in play would work out quite a bit better if they don't have it. If it's the fairy, it doesn't really matter since we wouldn't be able to play Paragon without uh, the opponent bouncing it. Right, they had Clarion, but at least we made them use it with only two creatures in play, which kind of feels like a victory. Between Paragon and Champion plus Avon Legion, I think I like Champion plus Knight since then we can maybe combine the Paragon with the first strike on Fervent Champion to take out a bigger blocker. And Narset. It's got a minus. And takes out Knight of a Legion. Alright, play General to take out Narsets. Don't think it matters too much what we exile. Maybe they have Elspeth Conqueror's death actually, so getting rid of the Planeswalker makes more sense. Alright, Sphinx. So I can attack with just a Fervent Champion to try and set up Paragon, or I can just Dire Tactics. I also don't want my opponent to keep Sphinx in play when they play Karuga, so I'm probably better off just using the Dire Tactics, even though they definitely can have scarier creatures than Sphinx, thinking of uh, the Cavaliers and Kenrith. Mountain means I don't get to play Venerable Knights. But we've got our opponent on the ropes. They did eventually draw fires into Sphinx, so they're waiting to set up a big Karuga. Can also think of the general's ability here. Could play Venerable Knights and then sack Champion and Knight, but that seems pretty bad. So I'm probably better off just sending in the Fervent Champion, hoping they block. And then just go Venerable Knights plus Paragon. Opponent takes it. Well, maybe now the play is to use a general to uh, kill the Sphinx in response to Karuga. But that still seems questionable. They have a Teferi as well. Alright, let's play Paragon. So they're gonna get to draw a lot of cards here with uh, this Karuga. The fairy means we can play Embercleave if we draw it. Which would otherwise be pretty strong. Don't really have any great attacks other than the Paragon. Yeah, we probably lose this. So 
So now we gotta wait for our opponent to play a big finisher. Gets to scry with castle too, so they're not gonna miss. Yeah, companions are pretty strong. If we didn't play the general and Embercleave, we could play something like Lurus in this deck, which I've seen be pretty effective too. But of course the goal was to play with general. Shadow the sky to clean up the boards, and there's Kenrith. So opponents got all the life gain they want. So we're 100% dead now. All right, I guess I get to kill the fairy just to spite him. But once it gets to this point with an active Kenrith and fires, there's no real coming back. Take nine. And they've got uh, 10 more life if they want it. Or they can draw some cards. Maybe they've got a stomp to close out the game. All right, GG's. Even an Amber Cleave would not be enough here. Although we would get pretty close. GG's. Alright, we're on the play. Um, not the best hand ever, but seems keepable. Turn one forests. Might as well flash in Paragon now for the life gain. Don't think that's gonna change the opponent's play significantly. Alright, so mono green stompy deck with uh, Yorvo. Well, the Paragons are pretty good against big green creatures. Kind of hoping they just take it so I can play Worthy Knights. Gem Racer, alright. Luckily we don't have Ember Cleave in play yet, but it is going to make a pretty big 8-8 Yorvo with Trample still. So this turn, probably still attack with everyone. Still got a two for one essentially. More gem razors. I guess the paragons are still good to attack. Put them down to four. They could potentially make use of Castle 2 here. 
Instead, it's going to be a 1 1 Serpent and a Vivian. Vivian could take out the Veteran, or could add a bunch of counters. Takes out the Veteran. Well, we've got Veterans for days. If I send everyone at my opponents, they could technically also block the 1-1 one, one, and then Chump Paragon go to 1, but I think all the outcomes are fine here. And now they trade it, so they don't have any creatures to put counters onto with Vivian. And our point explodes, so even with only two lands in play, we uh, still got there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hands. Fervent Champion into Worthy Knights. Tournament Ground's definitely helping out with our mana. Up against the Basic Mountain and Grim Initiates. So, probably Monorad. Don't really want to trade here. Another Grim Initiates. And this turn. Probably leaning towards just playing Crusader. Get the cards flowing, try and pick up some Anthem effects. And we could already Embercleave next turn if we wanted to. Alright, so I guess we'll uh, send everyone a Chandra. And then I can both Paragon and Cleave. And then we'll pump the Stormfists. And if they double block Worthy Knight, we can still Cleave and kill both Initiates. That works too. And then Paragon just for the lifelink here seems worthwhile against the red deck. So we're pretty far ahead on boards, but we don't have much in hand to work with. Torbrand could be a problem. Well, those were two pretty good draw steps. So Fervent Champion into Inspiring Veteran. And our opponent concedes before we can show them the Veteran. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha deck. Not sure what to make of that, but this hand's okay. I'm gonna be taking quite a bit of damage from my mana base. Maybe some sort of teamer ramp deck. This is probably a gross barrel. Mm, 
And there's a spiral. Get in for six, and next turn we could already be attacking for lethal. And yeah, opponent explodes. Being on the play and having a nice efficient curve like this can definitely be pretty punishing against slower decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, fine opening hands. So gonna need another land to cast uh, Dire Tactics. And need one more red for Embercleave, but can cast uh, Knights in the meantime. Turn one Pell Collector. If I wanted to have the option of casting Dire Tactics next turn, I should have shocked with the Godless Shrine. But uh, probably not going to be that desperate. Spellbreaker, grow spell collector. And I'll take the trade. Probably a good turn for the Black Lands Paragon. I do want to hit extra land drops, so in a sense playing Crusader is tempting, but I also don't want my opponent drawing a bunch of extra cards. Ooh, spicy. Everquill Phoenix. Well, once we get to play the Dire Tactics, we can exile the Phoenix. But for now it's gonna hit me pretty hard. Alright, so I get to exile the Phoenix. Could also Ember Cleave here, but then I'm just dead to the bird. So probably just better off uh, passing. And then next turn we can set up a big attack. Probably want to exile the Phoenix before it actually attacks in case of Ember Cleave. Otherwise, uh, they could cast a 4 mana cleave on the Spellbreaker, which would also be pretty devastating. Still want to play pretty conservative. So we'll exile Spellbreaker. The three powered knights can attack. And next turn Cleave should seal the deal. If they have another Phoenix, I'm dead. And yeah, the Exile on Dire Tactics, pretty key here at Exiling the Phoenix in the first place, otherwise they could get it back. So, best case scenario for the opponent, they have Amber Cleave, so this would hit for 8 total. So if I jump with the 1-1s, one they would only trample for 5 total. I guess I would die to the Crusader on my upkeep. So maybe we'll avoid that block like this. They cleave me. And then uh, I take 5, but then they're pretty dead on the way back to my own cleave. Sure. All right, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All 
All right, we're on the play. Reasonable hand, no one drops makes this a little slow, but we're on the play, which makes up for it. And then Crusader should draw us into more uh, cheap creatures to play out. Turn one goose. We'll save the Dire Tactics for whatever they ramp out, instead of the goose itself. Well, if that thing is a Planeswalker, I guess that's not gonna work. Play General, and then next turn hopefully we'll have a land to go Worthy Knight into Crusader, which is more mana efficient. The General's ability also pretty useful alongside Worthy Knight making 1-1 one -one tokens. It's gonna be Voracious Hydra for 3, taking out our General. All right, luckily drew the land. So, Worthy Knight plus probably Paragon. Could go double Crusader here. Although I've got to be careful not to take too much damage myself. And then keep the Paragon for next turn alongside Cleave, maybe. Sure. The Death Touch plus Double Strike combo is pretty effective. And we'll also gain a bunch of life. Because that's the problem with giving the opponent extra cards with Crusader, is that you kind of need to close out the game in a hurry. And that's where Cleave shines especially. Alright, let's uh, attack with everyone. Get to play a 2 mana Amber Cleave alongside Black Lance Paragon, so no matter how they block, should be able to take care of the Hydra and the Questing Beast. Or at least gain enough life where I'm not uh, too concerned on the way back. Alright, so if I put the Paradise Druid first, put the Questing Beast, and then I can do the whole uh, Double Strike Death Touch on the Crusader itself. That seems better to me. Gain 6 as well. Six mana for a Kogla. All right, gets to take out the equipped Crusader and can potentially take out the Amber Cleave. But they should be dead to these dark tactics. All right, sweet, seeing the power of Amber Cleave alongside the Black Lance Paragon in full display. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.